1 Corinthians 13, 7 is the, you know, 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter. And 1 Corinthians 13, 7 says that love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Well, why is that important? Revelation 12, 10 says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren, and he accuses us before God day and night. That's what Revelation 12, 10 says, that Satan accuses us before God. Ephesians 4, 27 is where it says, be angry, but don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't give a foothold to diabolos. That word means slander. If we go to bed on anger, then the devil comes and slanders our spouse or slanders someone else to us that we're angry at. The devil is described as an accuser and a slanderer. And you have to understand, every time, I call the devil the hurt whisperer, because every time you're hurt or offended, he whispers into your spirit slanderous, accusing remarks to offend you towards your spouse because he hates marriage. Marriage is the first institution that God ever created. Now listen to what I'm saying. Marriage is the first institution in the Bible that God ever created. It preceded the church, it preceded the state, it preceded financial institutions, educational institutions. It is the first institution that God ever created. He created it in Genesis chapter two, at the very beginning of the Bible, Genesis chapter three, Satan didn't attack Adam, Satan, Satan didn't attack Eve, he attacked marriage. Adam existed before Eve did. Adam and all the animals existed before Eve was created. He never attacked Adam until he was married. And when Adam was married, he came to attack their marriage because he understood as long as they were unified in marriage, they could do anything God wanted them to do. Marriage is the image of God. This is the mystery that Paul talks about in Ephesians 5. And whether you understand this or not, every time a couple stands and gets married, there is a target put on them by the devil to destroy their marriage. Now the good news is greater is he that is in us than he is in the world. And we can overcome the devil. But if you think, if you think for a minute that your marriage doesn't have an enemy, you're wrong. He wants to destroy your marriage. And the way he does it is every time your spouse fails you, every time your spouse offends you, he will come and whisper. He doesn't come to your door and knock on it and say, I'm Lucifer H. Devil, and I would like to come in and talk with you just a minute to destroy your life. That's not what he does. He slithers in like a, he comes by stealth. That's why he took the form of a serpent. He comes by stealth. He never, he doesn't tell us it's, he doesn't tell us it's him. We are his perfect disguise. He whispers these thoughts into your spirit and he wants you to believe they're your thoughts. Have you ever laid mad in bed? You're mad back to back, not breathing? Because you don't want to give your spouse the benefit of you being alive? Uh, and you're mad? And you're mad something has happened. You're laying there and you're mad and all these thoughts start racing in your mind? I'm not saying that all of those are from the devil, but I can just say this. When the Bible says don't go to bed on anger, you'll give the slander a foothold. The devil is going to come to you many, many times when you're disappointed and hurt and he is going to slander your spouse to you. He's going to tell you they're the wrong one. You made a mistake. I remember we lived about 20 miles from here and I was about 22 years old. And I remember sitting at my house one night, Karen and I were doing terrible. And I remember thinking to myself, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I know who I should have married. It was a girl in high school that I broke up with. But I should have married her. If I would have married her, everything would be okay. But I, made, I just made a mistake. And now I'm stuck with the wrong woman. I remember thinking that. And of course, Karen was having the same kind of thoughts. Well, I did marry the wrong woman. I mean, I'm, I'm so glad that I married Karen. That's not what I thought at that point. He'll tell you that your spouse is evil. He, he'll interpret your spouse's motives to you and convince you that you're married to the devil or his ex-wife or something like that. Well, why am I saying all this? Because agape won't believe that. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Now I want you to listen to me for just a minute. The devil, according to Revelation 12, 10, is standing in the presence of God, probably right now, accusing us before God. 
Well, let me, let me say this. I don't know about you, but he's got some pretty good info on me. Huh? God will never take up his offense against you. God will never listen to the devil because agape love believes the best about you and will not change its mind. In marriage, we're going to go through ups and downs. We're going to disappoint each other. We're going to hurt each other. We're going to have to go through some difficult times. And in the midst of that, the devil, the slanderer, and the accuser, he's going to come and feed our minds with poison. And as he's trying to offend us toward our spouse and advertise somebody else, real or imagined, he's advertising someone else as he's accusing our spouse, eros, phileo, Epithumia, no other form of love has the ability to shut him up except agape. Because all these other forms of love, they're emotion based. And when my emotions leave and he convinces me that you're against me and you're no good and you'll never change, I walk up and say, I don't love you anymore. I don't know that I ever loved you. All of a sudden we get amnesia. I don't know that I ever loved you. Why? What are you saying to me? I just don't love you. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, I believe, I believe what I believe. I've got these thoughts in my head about you. I used to have hope. I used to think good thoughts about you. But now all of a sudden, I don't think you're a good person. What happened? Well, things changed. No. Here's what happened. Because your love was emotion-based, you couldn't face down the devil when he came and started slandering your spouse. Your, your God in heaven has an evil devil in front of him day and night accusing you to God. And you need to be thankful that your God in heaven will never change his mind concerning you and never listen to an evil devil no matter how much good information he's got on you. Your God believes in you and he'll never change his mind. That's agape love. And agape love says, I believe in you. I believe in you. And I will never change that. And this is why we fell in love, by the way. You saw something in your spouse. You saw something in them. Let me say, you saw right. You you saw right. Because God's kind of love can see through all the dirt and all the scars and all the mistakes. And it can see into the divine being that God created in your mother's womb. And it believes that. But no other kind of love can do that. And I'm saying to you that God's love is so far beyond any other type of love, it's incomparable. But many people today who are falling in love and getting married, their love doesn't endure because they can't get through the hard times. Thank you for joining us. Experience the life-changing series, The Indestructible Marriage, on CD or DVD. Follow your interests and get social by connecting with Jimmy and Karen and the Ministry of Marriage Today on Twitter. Become a rock-solid partner today and equip yourself with the tools you need for a successful marriage. $14, $28, or $56 per month. Choose the partnership level that's right for you. Become a rock-solid partner today.